The thing about storing gravity is it's really easy, it's really cheap, and it's really clean. There we are. I've just stored some gravity. Of course, the question now is what to do with it. To do that, I took an Archimedes screw, duplicated it, and rotated it by 90 degrees to get this. Then that same duplication I did again and rotated it another 90 degrees, which gives me a three section. One more 90 degree section will give me my Archimedes screw, and that's my worm gear. And there it is put together, so back to the last. The other one turns, that's, uh, and back turns, that's awesome actually. I had no idea if that was going to work, but indeed it does. And this is what we're after, it's a humming top. Now you're only going to find something like this in a really good traditional toy store, like Kids Corner here in Herne Bay where I live. That is what we want. Okay, now we've got our top, we have to get it back to the studio, disassemble it and have a look at the mechanism. I'm pretty sure most people know how this works, but you do that, it spins like crazy. Now if we take this apart, we can have a look at it. When we get it apart, it's only two bits of steel, and in there is a slotted washer. This twisted bar pushes through the slotted washer, because you're holding the bar, of course, all it can do is spin and spin it does. Now this is the same mechanism that you'll find in twist and pump drills, and this is a really simple mechanism. Of course I turned to Tinkercad and drew this up, but I didn't draw it up straight from scratch. I actually got some extra bits from other places and made modifications to them because sometimes that's just the easiest thing to do. Now OT Vinta, and I've used them a couple of times, are doing this spinning top and at the heart of it is a mechanism that we want, which is right here, it's a ratchet mechanism. So I extracted that mechanism, got rid of the ball top, and created a cage for it to sit in. That cage, I did some of the bits on it, but other bits were available. For instance, these pillars were on Tinkercad, and, sorry, Thingiverse, and I grabbed them from Thingiverse and sized them to what I wanted. And of course, I did the same with these great feet that I just love. Again, they're on Thingiverse, and I just grabbed them and used them. So some bits I've grabbed and used, some bits I've adapted from what's already been done, and some bits I've drawn up myself. Now that's a good way of getting a model off the ground really, really quickly. So it puts together really easily and that's how it puts together. Now in there is a thrust bearing at 47 by 25 and it sits there because that is the main bit that's going to rotate. And you can see it's got holes in it to take the magnets and that sits nicely on that thrust bearing. So when we spin it, it spins nice and freely. Now the drive mechanism is this clutch plate here, and the only thing to remember is to get these the right way around. When you look at this clutch plate, you'll see a little sort of red projection, and the green projection goes onto the red because that's the way the clutch works. And then drop another identical thrust bearing into the recess in the center, and then we can put the clutch plate in. And there we go, like that. Now, in order to get that flywheel effect, what I've got here is a two and a half kilo barbell. And that sits on top there and fits directly on there. And that forms the flywheel portion. Then we can shove the handle in and give it a go. Okay, so I've put a serpentine coil around it. And to make these, I put a link at the end of this video to the serpentine coil making video. And then in the carrier, what we've got are some 20 mil magnets. They're 20 mil by 4.5 mil, and they are arranged north, south, north, south, north, south. That drops in there. Then we've got a cap that goes on here. That then goes on top there. And our pump handle goes in. Then we have to put that stop on the bottom because when you pull that up you don't want to be pulling it out all of the time so they put the stop on the bottom and either glue it or screw it in. Okay so clearly a child would know how to use this so I'm going to pump it up and down and we're going to get a volt reading and for that we've got Luke. <laughs> The earth has a conservative field. What that means is if I expend energy dragging this pebble up the hill, then I'd get exactly the same energy out if I just drop it. Of course, we use this principle 
all of the time. I mean, that's exactly what hydro energy is. We don't carry the rock, but it's the same principle, and it's the same principle in tidal energy. And this works because every time I move an object, I've actually transferred energy into it. And of course, I can get the energy back out by letting it go. And that's exactly what's happening. Now, I made a medium version at 60 millimeters long, and I've printed 10 of those because they will glue together to make a nice twist spiral that's actually quite long. And of course, you can change that length as much as you want. The only other thing we really need is um, this section and the ratchet section. This section is a rider. It's actually just a ring with four uh, indents in it that are big enough to take 12 millimeter ball bearings and they squeeze in there quite tightly and the ring will hold those in place. And that ring fits on the twist like that. And if I let that go, of course it drops. And as it drops, it will spin. Equally, if I hold that still and drop that, that will drop. But in that case, because this is still, that will spin. And what we're going to do is connect that to a new ratchet mechanism there and glue all of these together to make one long spiral. When you fix them all together, that's what you get. Now I just glued these with super glue because it's a prototype and there is the adapted ratchet mechanism which is gonna sit in there. So all we need to do with this is put on the ratchet teeth, attach this to here and we're pretty much ready to go. So there's the ratchet teeth, we'll give that a spin. There we go, works <laughs> a treat. Now on here we need a stabilizing weight because this acts like a flywheel and I've got a small uh, 1.25 kilogram barbell weight which sits on there like that rather neatly. And I've put a little bit of super glue on there to hold that centered. And there we go. And now if we give that a spin, it'll continue to spin. We're ready now to put that on. <laughs> to test this, I put four of them on because obviously we can make this as high as we like, but as it gets taller than the base that's supporting it, it's going to start to wobble. And so what we need are guide rails and the guide rails will help as it gets very much taller. And here's my weight and I've got the ring at the bottom there. And all we're actually going to do is put that on there and drop it. As it drops, it should spin this and we'll get a little bit of free well effect here. And of course, we've got it attached to a meter, so we'll get some generation out of it. But let's give it a go and see if it actually works just in this position here. OK, so keep your eye on that meter. So that's as far as I got with that. And to be honest, this video has been a bit of an omnibus of previous videos I've done. But the next bit, I owe a huge debt of gratitude to Jamie Owens of Hinkley Parks Primary School in Hinkley. He sent me this video, which I thought was an absolute work of genius. So I've included the video here because when I looked back for it, I actually had an enormous amount of difficulty finding it. And I thought that this was such a genius idea that it really didn't want to get lost. And I wanted to show everybody this idea because I think this is the very next step to take the work that we've been doing and create an actual machine that will produce energy and be incredibly efficient. It was created by the students of the Technological University of the Philippines as an emergency generator and is a portable gravity-powered backup power supply. If you look at it, it contains all of the elements that we've talked about in this video. We have a worm gear being driven by a falling weight, and that drives a generator at the bottom to produce electrical output. The main differences are, it's in a cage to make sure that it only goes one direction, and here comes the true genius of it. When the weight reaches the bottom, you turn the crank handle to rotate the cage so the weight is back up at the top and free to fall again. True genius in action.
Now, normally I would have built that before doing a video on it, but I thought it was so cool and so well done by the students that it was worth sharing as is, because I don't think it's got as much exposure as it deserves. It deserves to be viral. It's stunning in terms of its engineering and its practical applicability. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much again, James, for letting me know about that. And please do remember to like and subscribe.